We are in the Scuderia de Quirinale, the stables of what was once the residence of the popes here in Rome, where they ruled not only over the city, but a large swath of central Italy known as the Papal States. Today, this museum hosts a groundbreaking exhibition, Raphael 500, marking the 500th anniversary of the artist's death here in Rome. Raphael Sansu was born in 1483 and died here in 1520 and was buried in the Pantheon. This exhibition is co-curated by Matteo Anfranconi, director of the Scuderie, together with Marzia Faglietti, curator from Florence's Galleria degli Uffizi. Matteo and Marzia will now be joining us to guide us through this remarkable exhibition. Matteo, thank you so much for welcoming us today and for making possible this, this very special private visit to the, to the exhibition. And I actually, as, as we were mentioning earlier, I, I grew up here in Rome and the first time I visited the Scuderia de Quirinale was in 2000 for the, for the exhibition on Sandro Botticelli's beautiful drawings of Dante de Vallin's comedy. And so it's wonderful to be here exactly 20 years later uh, for this exhibition on, on Raphael. At the time I came, I came with a school trip and I'd, I'd love to hear from you more on your plans for the museum and, and also a brief history of this, of this, very, special, of this very special place where the, where the Pope used to keep his horses. 20, 20 years ago we opened this, uh, this place. It was in occasion of the big celebration for the, jubi, the Grande Jubileo, the 2000. And it's very uh, big honor and a big responsibility for us to, to, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of this institution with such an important show. We have to remember that the 10th anniversary of Scuderia in 2010 was celebrated with the big, the huge show on, on Caravaggio. It was also an anniversary, the 400th anniversary from his death. And uh, so it was another block, but I mean, it was incredibly uh, successful show. I mean, uh, many people will remember, we would remember it. And, uh, I think it was something like 700,000 visitors. I mean, it was 700,000 visitors, of course, which was more or less the expectation we had for Raphael I mean, before the, the, uh, the, 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 the passing through a different era with the, after the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, so, I mean, for the Scuderie, which is an institution, but I mean, everyone knows it's not a museum, it's, a, it's an exhibition venue, so we, not, we have no permanent collections. We belong to the Presidency of the Republic and we are run uh, by the Ministry of Culture. So we are a highly institutional place and uh, mainly devoted to the, I mean, the golden age of the Italian art, of the idea of classical art. So it's extremely significant for us to have the chance to celebrate Raphael here in Rome in this anniversary, which is, I mean, I, Raphael is the idea of classical in, in absolute. And of course, we are, we are in Rome, and so we, in a sense, we, we begin with the end, with the end of his life. He died here and is buried here, and so, of course, it's interesting that the exhibition is dated Raphael 1520 to 1483, and so it, it goes back chronologically, and indeed, that's how you've, that's, that's how you've set the exhibition. And the, the, first, you know, the first pictures you see, even, even as you walk up the stairs to the, you know, to the Scuderie, you see his, you see his death, and then you see the, you know, the beautiful picture from the Vatican Museums depicting the mourning in Rome and all the people that the city of Rome that's really in mourning for his death, and then you, you have that, the the amazing, ep, uh, you know, his 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 amazing epitaph, his amazing uh, tomb from the Pantheon, and actually it'd be wonderful to hear to hear from you about how how it was created. I I couldn't believe. You know, for a moment I wondered if you'd removed Raphael's tomb from the Pantheon. I was in the Pantheon the other day and it was still there, so I knew it couldn't have been the real tomb, but I, I put my hand to it and, it and it felt cold, the way marble does. So how did, how did you do that? Uh, but I think it was a bit audacious to, to, to have this in mind, uh, we did, to decide to, to start from the end and to have the tomb as the first big uh, item of the show and to go much backwards and everything. Uh, so per, for example, at the beginning of the communication, when we started to communicate the show before the opening, uh, many, many people thought it was a sort of typo or, or, or mistake of, the, of editing in, in publicity. And uh, so it was, I mean, it, it, it gave us the idea of how people was totally unprepared to our, to our uh, initiative. 
uh, but um, in, in a positive way. I mean, it was something very new and was very surprising. And the idea was also to surprise, to also to um, help the visitor to look at Raphael with a different view, from a different view point of view, from the beginning, from 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 the moment when everything was done and everything was complete. And it was also very significant for us that the um, the, the the burial in the Pantheon, which is an expression of the will. Of the of the Raphael is so uh, such a symbolic gesture. He decided to also to die in an, in, in the way they, they, the the ancient people uh, used to do so in in a, in a, in a magnificent magnificent frame in the monument that was for definition the monument of perfection of uh, of ancient architecture, and uh, so it's a sort of uh, of uh, um, last will of Raphael. To, I mean, it's, not, it's not something uh, pharaonic, it's not something uh, related to the idea to be celebrating himself, but it's the idea to, I belong to the idea of ancient art. And this is the, the, the most important legacy we have from, from Raphael, I think. And so we wanted to have this uh, strong uh, curatorial gesture at the beginning of the show and wanted to have the, the audience to, to, to reflect on this. And so, looking also at, at his, you know, at his influences, his influences from literature, but also from other artists, it's it's remarkable, you know, lo looking at at the young girl with the with the unicorn, you know, he must have, surely, in in visiting Florence, seen Leonardo da, Leonardo da Vinci and and the Mona Lisa. Is that is that a fair assessment? It's, it's absolutely true. If Raphael, when in Florence, is is I mean, is especially young. Raphael is always young, but when he's Florence, of course, he's a very young man, and uh, with no special um, um, commissions yet. So he was uh, um, absorbing from from uh, from all around whatever he, he could, and not only Michelangelo and Leonardo, for example, Fra Bartolomeo is very important for him, and in general the idea of the late Renaissance. But um, w there is a special feature of Raphael's character, which is uh, the, um, the devotion to, to uh, other artists' art. And with no, no fear at all to be not original, for example, he wanted to bring in an, in an original formula uh, pieces of beauty that, that were coming from other ideas. Even Michelangelo, which was the alternative of of Raphael in terms of style. Raphael in, in many occasions tried to put something of the Raphael, of the Michelangelo formula in his own one. And this is a proof of his uh, serenity in, uh, in, uh, in putting together. Raphael is a synergic artist that wants to create a, a personal proposal of beauty that has many companies, a sponge, and he wants to, 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 to give back what he, what he takes uh, in, in function of a new idea of art that was uh, helpful for everyone to be more happy. I know no, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful analogy to think of him as this, you know, as this interpreter who is absorbing and then, and then giving back through his, through his reinterpretation. It's very generous. Raphael is a very generous artist. Mm. And would you, say what, would you say that that is his, is his defining trait? What, what, what can we say is his defining characteristic? What the mark Raphael leaves on art history, as it were, you know, as we as we look through, you know, the, the thirty seven years of his life and the and the decades uh, of his work. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to uh, to appear too much naive, but I think that we have to be simple when we say that, and we have to to say something very clear. Um, I think Raphael wanted to create a more beautiful world, which is, I mean, a very uh, uh, childish uh, way of expression, I would say. But it is true. It, it, it is not so much, so much com more complicated than this. Raphael wanted to, and was persuaded that he had the occasion, also with all the power he had from the Pope, to, real to realize something. To, to bring more beauty in the world for people and for, for, the, for the posterity, which is also very important, the idea of what was coming uh, after. And uh, for conservation, he, he was so much interested in, cons in, in preserving the, the heritage for the future and to create a new one based on the heritage because um, beauty is, uh, is, uh, is not only an aesthetical dimension, it's sort of a moral dimension for Raphael. And so perhaps this, this is really why 
why Raphael resonates so much with audiences today. You know, he's, he's, he's so beloved and the, you know, the, the, the huge queues that we see massing outside to come in and see this exhibition of people who have you know, patiently waited for their, for their time slot to enter. Obviously, this artist has, has a tremendous pull and, and attraction on, on contemporary audiences and on our imagination. And so perhaps at, at this time, you know, would you say that it is this, this desire to bring beauty into the world and to look after it and and, and think of, 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 of what is to come, think of our posterity and, and leaves a, a lasting trace of, of, of beauty and, and artistic heritage for posterity. Yes, absolutely, but it's much more than I thought because I, when we were approaching to this anniversary, I, my fear was that people was not so much interested in, in subscribing this, this, uh, this idea of beauty of Raphael, of simplicity, but it was be, this was because I mean the, the the last twenty years at least are dominated were dominated by the opposite opposite idea the idea the Caravaggio uh, f, um, the idea of the, the dark side of the moon the art was I mean beauty and the contrary of beauty uh, romanticism um, 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 the the Caravaggio chiaroscuro Michelangelo Titanism uh, is something that uh, is the um, includes in classicity something which is completely uh, coming from completely another way and uh, uh, contemporary feeling is, 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 is often related to this kind of complexity and Raphael is not, la is not that complex, Raphael is more straight, uh, uh, straightforward and uh, uh, so I, 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 was, uh, I was a bit scared about what was the reaction but at the end people is is, is, was as, like expecting, it was prepared, not only prepared, but perhaps in, in the need of finding again this uh, uh, proposal, which is a more uh, simple and more straightforward proposal related to the simplicity and, and, uh, and uh, also a huge uh, uh, role in our lives of beauty. Earlier you mentioned, of course, everything that, that he could do under the auspices of the, of the Pope or even indeed of the popes he worked for. And it would, it would be lovely to hear more about uh, Raphael's relationship with the, with the papacy. And it was, it was a very symbiotic relationship, I think one can say. Uh, um, two popes made Raphael um, what we know, what it is now. Julius II, de la Rovere, the pope who, who called him to Rome, as an incredibly cultivated and sophisticated mind. Uh, the Pope that um, had the int intuition to call to Rome at the same time Raphael, Michelangelo and Leonardo. So I mean, it, it would be enough to understand how, 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 how was his view of, 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 uh, of being a, a patron. Um, the second Pope is Leo X. Leo X is, this, is the son of Lorenzo il Magnifico, the personification of the uh, Renaissance and the of the prestige of the power of Renaissance, and the, the one who uh, had the strategy and, all the, and the, the means to bring the capital of the Renaissance from Florence to Rome, together with the name of the Medici. Uh, this, this, uh, this translation from Florence to Rome at the end of the at the beginning of the uh, 16th century, is also the, the proof that uh, it, it was a sort of a, uh, attempt of the Medici, fa Medici family to, uh, to arrive to eternity through the spiritual power of the papacy. And uh, the, uh, the, Raphael, uh, the, the relation of Raphael with the popes is different with Julius and, and, uh, and, uh, and Leo. Uh, Julius is, uh, uh, gave Raphael the possibility to, to, to prove how big it was his uh, uh, creativity and all the stanze, the stanze della segnatura, la scuola di Atene, which is perhaps the most uh, uh, celebrated and perfect uh, uh, fresco we have of, the, of his um, uh, Roman experience. But uh, uh, when, uh, during the age of, of Julius, um, uh, Raphael was a painter and was engaged in, that, in this incredible uh, challenge and was thinking perhaps not in so many other things. With, with Leo X, he had an, a, a sudden expansion of interest and also the possibility to dialogue with not only artists but also humanists, uh, which um, was a sort of upgrade in terms of, uh, 
of uh, studies and scholarship for Raphael. He was in love of, uh, of uh, he was in love for uh, knowledge, Raphael. And so uh, Pietro Bembo, uh, Tebaldeo, um, Castiglione, the, 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 the greatest mind of the time, was in, they were in Rome and they were the community of Raphael. And he absorbed from them now the intention to think bigger and to, to imagine something more ambition, which was not only the idea of marvelous decorations, but was the realization of something more structural, the renovation of the city of Rome, as big and as, as splendid as it was in the ancient times. And interestingly, he died on what was Good Friday, the exactly, year he died. Exactly, the, day, the same date of the death of Christ. So, uh, and... Uh, so many other symbols of the, uh, were interpreted as, the, as a sign of, of uh, his being divine, of his divine nature. The legend, the legend of Raphael. The legend of Raphael, but it was so much close to reality. Marcia, thank you so much for being with us today and, and for taking us through this remarkable exhibition that you've put through with, with Matteo. And it's, it's also beautiful to see two, you know, two, of, two of Italy's greatest museums, the Scuderia del Quirinale, where Matteo is director, and, uh, and the Galleria degli Uffizi um, in Florence, which you represent, uh, you know, working together on this, on this magnificent co-production. It's what? It was a really a pleasure to, to, to work together. There, there, there are three works that, that sort of stand out immediately for their subject matter and also for their, for their themes. And I'd, I'd, I'd love for us maybe to talk a bit about them. The first is, of course, the, the self-portrait, the self-portrait with a friend. Coming to the self-portrait with a friend by the, of, um, now in the Louvre, uh, we can say that uh, this is uh, a sort of experiment, uh, artistic experiment, because uh, Raphael used uh, a mirror, um, like Leonardo wanted to uh, suggest to the painter you have to, to use the mirror to correct the uh, mistakes in nature. Raphael used the mirror to create another effect, uh, because uh, if you look at the two figures. Uh, um, I think that uh, the friend is uh, coming uh, um, um, to us uh, with this, uh, uh, with the harm, to say the real Raphael is not behind me, is not this. This is a reflection of a mirror. The real Raphael is uh, the, there. Really, uh, at your, at your, um, how do you say, to uh, fianco, uh, right? Yeah, right by, yes, right by your yes, side. Yes, the real Raphael is a mystery because uh, Raphael was uh, a, an artist so rapid, so quickly in his mind that, that I think I suppose that uh, he was uh, ma making one thing and he was uh, thinking two other thousand things uh, in the same moment. Uh, it was a Vulcan uh, in a very sense. Uh, and Raphael really wanted to, um, to go beyond uh, the limits. Uh, I think that this is the, the, the uh, my idea is a, a, of an artist, a really an avant-garde artist uh, in this sense. Uh, it was the real um, herede, herede, herede of uh, Leonardo, uh, the, really the strongest, the um, closest friend, uh, spiritual friend of Leonardo, I, in my opinion. Going back to some of the to some of the works we'd 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 mentioned, there's the there's the remarkable portrait of the three cousins. Yes, yes. And what it, you know, not it, it's it, it's a very important picture. Not only for its, you know, for the brilliance of its execution and and the beauty of its subject matter, but also, you know, what it what it means in terms of you know the the power of these three individuals and and Raphael's relationship to them. The portrait is very interesting because we have uh, in this portrait uh, several um, levels of interpretation. Mm. The first level is uh, the portrait of Leo, 
with the two cousins, uh, Cardinal Clem um, Giulio de' Medici, the future Clement VIII, and uh, Luigi de Rossi. There is another level. Uh, we have uh, Raphael wanted to stress uh, the import the humanistic uh, culture and the culture of antiquity, the the the, the predilection of uh, for the antiquity of the Pope. There is a third level. Raphael wanted uh, with the uh, play of the opening of the uh, of the book. Uh, to allude to the importance of uh, to construct a very big uh, uh, church mm. with uh, a lot of uh, uh, quan a quantity of taxes uh, mm. and uh, um, and uh, a, a f an effort economic effort uh, requested uh, to the German <laughs> people and outside Italy. No, it was uh, very important to understand. It is also important to understand that uh, the opening of the book, uh, the Bibbia Hamilton, now in the Kupferstig cabinet in Berlin, uh, is not casual, but uh, is a, uh, contains an al allusion to this uh, fact. Mm. Um, but there is also a, another level, uh, more intimate uh, and more uh, for a, I think, for a close uh, for a number of friends. Because if you look attentively to the expression of Luigi de Rossi, you can understand that if Le Leo the saint is represented as uh, this humanist pope if uh, uh, Cardinal Giulio is represented as a, an heir of this political, the same political, Luigi de Rossi, Luigi uh, is uh, looking at us and is a little bit uh, sorry about uh, the situation. Mm. In the Luigi de Rossi, we can uh, uh, we can uh, um, intuire in we can we can we, we, we can intuit intuit the um, dangers of the situation, the mm. precarity of the situation, and uh, all the pre preoccupation of the Pope and his circle. Luigi de Rossi was uh, very important uh, in the um, political of Leo X because he was the man of France. He was a uh, strict ally ah, of with France, France. Yeah. With France and uh, uh, was important in this. Uh, of course. In this. But Luigi de Rossi uh, demonstrate, demonstrate in the painting the uh, dangerous of the moment, the precarity of the moment, even if uh, the uh, painting is a triumph of red <laughs> and a triumph of a uh, uh, beautiful thing in the, on the yeah. uh, table, but uh, the, uh, the situation was really was precarious. And uh, so we have uh, different levels, different meanings. And Raphael is uh, always in this way simple if uh, we want to to see uh, the simplicity harmonious if uh, we want to 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 see only the harmony but uh, really dense very right, dense and complex at the same if, time if uh, we want to to deep mm. and to go in the, the well, and, and, and 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 speaking of, of of digging down and going deep Perhaps we should we should do that for the uh, for the ecstasy of Santa Cecilia. Ah yes, I like so much of this yes. <laughs> because you know uh, Raphael wanted to represent a, what is not representable, the ecstasy. Uh, there are infinity modi, <laughs> uh, different ways. Uh, an infinity of uh, ways uh, to represent uh, the ecstasy, but not uh, as a, an interior, interior intimate course. and individual experience. 
In that case, he um, was able absolutely to, uh, to, win this, uh, challenge, to win this challenge and to represent the individual, individual experience of San Cecilia. And uh, the, the idea of silence uh, around uh, Santa Cecilia, I prefer in Italian in yeah. this case, yeah, of uh, be, around the Santa Cecilia there is a, a sort of uh, silence. The silence uh, of this uh, saint uh, um, with uh, this important, with their important stories, uh, but the story of Santa Cecilia in that mo mo moment is not uh, the story of a life, is uh, the story of uh, this intimate uh, experience. And uh, Raphael, in this silence, in this concentration uh, um, of the figure, can um, uh, represent uh, all this uh, uh, indicibile. Mm. Yeah, all these, un uh, everything that is, that is unsayable, that's unspeakable, that can't be, you know, how to, how to, how to portray that, that which can't be seen, that which can't be said. Yes, yes. Uh, and, 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 and therein, I think we can say therein lies his genius. Rafa wanted to represent at the end the apparitions, the ecstasies, the transfiguration, everything, what is not uh, visible and what is not uh, representable in the realm, uh, realm of painting. But uh, he represented these, uh, these uh, difficult matters uh, in a way that uh, at the end they, uh, they, these matters, these contents, uh, appeared realistic. And this I mean, is the challenge. Incredi of incredibly Rafa. realistic. Yes. The Santa Cecilia for me is a, a, a genial idea of how to so how to go beyond the uh, Leon Battista, the, the conception, the conception of painting in the Renaissance period, and the idea of a new painting for the future generation. And so you say that that's, that's really where he makes that, where he, he, he makes that, he crosses that threshold. Yes. And makes that leap yes. with, with, the, with yes. the transfiguration of Santa yes. Cecilia. Yes. Marzia, thank you so much. It's been, it's been a real pr privilege to see the exhibition with you uh, and a privilege to be here on this beautiful sunny day. Yes, and this is uh, for me a privilege. I'm very, me. very glad. Good. And congratulations again to you and Matteo. It's such, it's such a beautiful exhibition. And, and, and thank you for, for making possible this, this first Freeze Masters virtual tour. And, uh, and we look forward to many more. Again, thank you so much. Thank you to you, Nathan.